Hello, ladies. How's everyone doing this evening? Hi. Great. How's everybody? Week. Have everyone have a good week? Great Thank week. Thank Wendy, Wendy had a fun week. Wendy, tell us about the exhibit. Oh, the Obama exhibit at the High Museum was the highlight of my week. It really was. So I recommend it. You definitely want to see it. Um, it should be here until March 20th. There's, um, you know, all about the artists, all kind of information about, you know, the details that they put into the, the portrait sittings okay. or Michelle and Barack. It's beautiful. So I didn't hear it. Is, do you have to get a microphone or is someone talking about it or are you reading it? Um, no, no, no. You're reading it. You're reading it. But there is a section where um, it's sort of like a video play. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, any any other um exhibits along with that that relate to Michelle and Michelle and Barack, or is it the main focus just their um portraits? Their well, you know, their exhibit is separate. So that's like a separate exhibit at the high. So no, nothing related to it. They, you know, they got the regular exhibits on the other floors and, and things like that. So they have mm -hmm. nothing else about Michelle and Barack is what I'm asking you. No other photographs, mm -hmm. just those. Just those. Oh, okay. By these two commission artists, so you find out, you know, all of the details and the, what went into their, you know, their cho choice of outfits and all the, you know, everything. Okay. Everything. All right. Well, we will be going uh, hopefully soon. We're gonna make our reservations because that's gonna start getting tight, you know. Hey guys out there, everybody, just want to remind you, please like, share, leave a comment, and subscribe. We really do want to hear your feedback. We're anxious to talk about some of the things that you want to talk about, especially women, because I know you're out there and you're dealing with the same things that Vani, Wendy, and I are dealing with in this dating scene today. So come on, guys, let's hear from you. Hey, I want to just tell you, next week we're going to have yes. a guest, um, a friend of mine, his name is Jonathan Young. He is um, a manager, he manages musicians, and he also has a radio station, and I don't want to give the wrong... Um, the wrong acronym for it. So I'll give you that next week, but he has a jazz uh, radio station on the web. Want you guys to check that out. So I'll give that information to you next week when he is here with us. But we wanted to kind of talk, continue talking about um, the advice that men give women, dating advice and relationship advice. So um, we found some of the things that they said uh, interesting, some we didn't find too credible because uh, they put themselves in a situation and then they said that the woman should have done this or not done that. Um, I think that was one of the first things we spoke about, right, Bonnie, with the, uh, the yeah. pregnant or yes. something. So we figured, you know, you, you enjoyed the fruits of that labor until something happened and you could have done something yourself. So we didn't find that to be um, very good advice for uh, especially young women. So, all right then. Well, listen, we're going to go ahead and get started. We have a few more um we have some more advice from these uh, gentlemen. All this information comes from conversations with uh, Michael Bazin. You know, he's always talking about relationships and whatnot. So ladies, here we go. The first one is uh, from a gentleman. And he says that every conversation is not an argument. And just because you get emotional and loud doesn't make you right. You're not always right. Really? <laughs> talk to a grown man like he's a child and then turn around and say he doesn't know how to communicate. He just doesn't want to communicate with you. A good man does not want to go out and fight with the world and then come home and fight with his woman. Feminine energy is the key to a man's heart. There we go, ladies. That feminine energy again. So, Wendy, what do you think about that? Feminine energy versus that big D energy, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know what? Seriously, sometimes men don't realize that because they don't respond, the argument, no, I don't want to say the argument, but the disagreement kind of starts at that point because of their, their non-responsiveness. So what do you think, Bonnie? If you don't bring one, if you don't bring it, it won't be one. I'm like, um, it depends on what you're saying. I mean, I, I don't know what causes a person to get loud. Um, it has to be what you bring into the table. So if you're bringing something that maybe you've discussed before and it's not agreeable, 
you might get a little loud because you're like, hey, I'm tired of hearing this. If you bring something neg ne negative to the table, you know, not even necessarily that you had to hear it before, that might be, um, you know, pause to bring your octave up a little bit. Um, so it depends on what it is. But Other he's than that, it could always sound like, you know, um, Marilyn Monroe, if that's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> women always want to argue. Why is, it, why is it that men think women always want to argue? No, sometimes it's their disposition that starts the, arg that starts the argument. You know, sometimes women just want to talk. Well, you know what? If you don't want to have a conversation, say to the woman or say to your, say to your lady, you know what? I don't really want to talk about that, Ryan. I'm not in a good mood, so we, the conversation might not go well. Say that. Don't just let her continue to have a conversation and get upset because you're not being to me you're not communicating back with her and then she i don't think that's gonna work you tell your woman you don't want to talk about it and she want to talk about it nope that's gonna make that octave go up a couple of notches like what do you mean you don't want to talk about it i'm ready to talk about it we're not talking about that's it. What i'm saying that's what i'm saying as women we have to listen to that you know because there's one there's one statement on here where the gentleman says that men hurt well men hurt as well men come into relationships broken as well so it's it's, it's almost it's almost like you know we have to recognize their feelings as well so if a man does say that to you then you have to say okay baby can we talk about this later you know that's just how i that's my take on it and trying to be a better person i guess well, yeah, i think that even before some might say that, um, some men might say that, and some might not even say that, but you got to be picking up on that it's, he's shutting down. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like anybody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you got to be picking up when that person is not hearing you, and this is just not, you know, you got to de-escalate things before they get out of hand. That's my thing. No, no, that's what I'm saying as well. You have to, you have to, you have to, either, if, either he's, if he doesn't say it, you have to recognize, like you're saying, you have to recognize yeah. that he's not in the mood for it. But at the same time, I still think that you need to say, I'd like to, you know, discuss this with you at a later time. I see that you're really not in the mood right now. So, you know, let's, uh, we can let it go for now. I mean, because I think that if it's something that someone's bringing to the table, it obviously is something that's bothering that person. And it's all in the approach. And like you said, listening what listening for the things that are not being said. Because sometimes that's what they do. They don't say anything, but you have to hear that as well. All right, ladies. So I don't know. We just get a bad rap. <laughs> all the yeah, I, that's what I that's what I'm agreeing with. Cause why the heck do I always have to feel sorry for you? Feel sorry for <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <too. laughs> so, so here's so here's our next um uh our next adv advice. What your girlfriends tell you about you and your man's relationship is, all, is also what they tell others and discuss and laugh at you as, as a fool later on. Pay very close attention to what gossip they bring to you. And if you're in a committed relationship, keep your closest friends to be who, keep your closest friends to be who are in a similar relationship as you too. So that's kind of jumbled up. But what I got out of that was your closest friends should be more like you. So your closest friends should be women. If you're in a relationship, a committed relationship, you, they should be in a committed relationship as well. Not single women or women that are just dating here and there. That, that's what I took out of that jumbled um, those words, basically. <laughs> you see, he said, and you, if you're in a committed relationship, keep your closest friends to be who are in similar relationship as you. So basically your closest friends should be similar to you. You're in a committed relationship, they're in a committed relationship. Cause I think what he's saying is now you can have, you're gonna have different kind of conversations. They're not going to go back and talk to their friends about you and your relationship, but single women tend to do that more is what he's saying, I guess. What do you guys- So are you saying take their advice? Are you saying because if, a, if, if someone is in a similar relationship as you, um, you're not, it's, it's better to take their advice because they've gone down that same road as you, that's, as opposed to that's single. That's they're what jealous. I'm it. Like be with like-minded people, basically. So be yeah. with people that are in a relationship, a committed relationship, because the conversations are probably going to be similar more so than your single friends, basically. I guess. What do you think? Mm. <clears throat> I mean, I see, I see the theory behind that, but I mean, can that? Can you really? Just do that. 
<laughs> no, no. You could you're gonna have single. That would be difficult to do. You're gonna have nine times out of ten. You you're going to have girlfriends that are single friends that at the same time that you're in a relationship and exactly. you know what I mean. So I don't. So that's I see the theory behind it. It's almost like saying if you're married, then you should only hang out with ladies. Married who are married. people, but basically. Yeah. Which I don't think is that's not real world relationship. So we're gonna we're gonna put that advice in the trash. Yeah, I don't know if you if you can really do that. And it might be some people who really will follow that advice, you know. Oh, but you know what? Some people do because I I know people that kind of stopped talking to me, and I kind of came to that conclusion that because I wasn't married, all their other friends were married. I was a single one, so they kind of pulled themselves away from me. So I can see how. It can ha it, it has happened because it's happened. Yeah, to yeah. Well, I know even with having kids, sometimes you are closer to a friend that has kids just because they understand where you come <laughs> from, you know, versus somebody. So I do get that. I get that. That's just hard to do. I don't know if you can really do that. Genuinely do. I mean, it happened to you. They did it. But yeah, that's kind of cold. I don't know. It's not in real life, so. Yeah, I don't think so. All right, uh, you don't have to be superwoman all the time. Once a man shows you he can be the man you need him to be, relax, let him be that man. How often do you think that happens? <laughs> I know that's what Wendy wants, so I'm gonna let you go first, Bonnie. <laughs> you don't have to um, be superwoman. You in the very beginning, the in the very beginning. In the, in the very beginning of a re relationship, I think a man is showing you, yeah, he could be a man. And then as the relationship progresses on, if he, if that is his true self, yes, it will always be like that. But if it's just um, a man trying to, you know, show off and let you know, yeah, I'm the one for you, this, that, and the other thing, um, mm -hmm, that can happen. But I just think that later on, it gets kind of lazy and lay back and then you wind you up picking up the slack. That, you don't think that man can be consistent? Only if he's real at handyman and doing that kind of stuff, yeah. Okay, so so basically that's what he's saying. If he shows you that and you believe he's genuine, then let him, and I say let him, let him be that because like you said, if he's not really like that, as the relationship starts to grow and develop, you'll see the um the real person and the agent will go by the wayside, you know. Right. The right. agent. The agent. <laughs> <laughs> that agent always shows up at some point. Let's well, I think agent agent comes to you know stays around for the first three months or so. Really. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So basically, <laughs> around month four, if he if he's not taking out the trash and nail putting the nail <laughs> somewhere, we might want to question that. <laughs> All right, guys, understand we as men have feeling too. We aren't hard all the time. We get vulnerable. So who's dealt with a vulnerable man that was really transparent? Um, I mean, they do cry. They cry. And nobody has to be dead for them to cry. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Uh, so that's, they have their moments where they, you can see vulnerability. Certainly, yes. What about you, Vaughn? Have you, dated, have you ever dated anyone that was really vulnerable with you, really open, where you felt like they were showing more of themselves to you than they would show to someone else? Maybe too much, yeah. <laughs> she said too much. <laughs> you know, I can get turned off if you just a little too much, okay? Crying over something is one thing. Crying... Well, that's like, Bonnie, that's like your friend, you are, you, you consistent because that man in the theater, he, he had a little boo-boo and he wanted a tourniquet and all he needed was a band-aid. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. See, I can't, I, I'm, I'm not the one. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not that one. That wasn't a part of love language to say if you were going to be Nancy Nurse or not. Um, if that was a part of love language, I would definitely be real on that one. And it would pick up my realness that I'm not that person. I'll feel sorry for you to a certain extent, but if you tell me your, your pinky is broke and you're like, Oh, oh and then you go home and you're like, oh, oh, and 
no, I can't deal with it because I, I've had too many other broken things on me that I've had to persevere with. And that's what I think a man is supposed to be. He's supposed to persevere. Okay. That's what I want. You want, no, you want a man to be vulnerable. You want him to open up. Not too vulnerable. Not too vulnerable. Right. Well, that's, you don't, that's you don't want saying. him to be you know, walking around teary-eyed all the time, but mm -hmm. you definitely want him to be open with you because that that's how you get to learn someone and really understand and know them. And when you're making decisions and whatnot about in the relationship, you know how this person thinks and whatnot. Or use it against them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sounds like you've done that before, Bonnie. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Wendy? You think she's done that before? <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, clearly she's making fun of this guy's poor boo boo. Now, what if his what if his love language was physical touch, and so he wanted you to to touch the boo boo and wrap it up and kiss it? Yeah, I would. I would wrap it up. <laughs> I, no, no, I would wrap it up and I'd be nice about it. it. But if two if two weeks later you are still crying about that damn boo boo, I would tell you where to put the boo boo. You I, ain't giving two. Myself. You ain't giving two minutes with the boo boo. No, I gave him two weeks. I I, I wrapped it up and was nice. No, oh, oh you okay, mean okay. you mean when okay. I met? No, because you don't understand. He was just he he came at me macho and this and that. And maybe one thing I didn't say was that. I had like a short haircut and a um um you know like a weave on top, and he came and said, "Look at you with your little toupee on." So, <laughs> oh my goodness. toupee, look at you with your little toupee on, you know. And I had a cute little short haircut, and this was just a little extra hair on there, as we women do. And he came at me like that. So hell no, I ain't gonna be right with you on your little ass boo boo, your fingertip. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we got to work on Bonnie a little bit, okay? We got to work on Bonnie. <laughs> Bonnie, in the words of Dr. Phil, how is that working for you? <laughs> It'll make a difference. It's working for me fine. Okay. okay. You know, I mean, we are all here um, not because we want to be, and um, COVID has three years of our lives you know, hindering on why we don't have anybody, but I don't think your boo-boo and stuff like that is my hindrance on why I don't have a man. Hey, ladies, I would there, say that. tell us, uh, do you prefer a vulnerable man, a man that's transparent, that is, you know, I don't want to say wears his heart on his sleeve, but someone that's going to be open and uh, show you the other side of them, show you that caring, loving side. Let us know. What, what do you think? You've heard, you've heard, you've heard what Vonnie thinks. So let's, let's, let us know what you think out there. All right, ladies. So here we go um, with another, uh, some more advice from another gentleman. He says, honestly, 50% of the job is simple. Men are very visual. So keep yourself looking as sexy as possible when, re when reasonable. Many women do not realize how much leverage that gives them. Number two, never let any man make you smaller or less than what you are or what you can be. There are men who will stop you from looking good and being all that you can be to make it easier for them to control you. Whoa, I like this brother. <laughs> so what do Me you think? Me too, I'm liking it, what he's saying. So what do you think about that, Wendy? 50% uh, of the job is simple. Men are very visual, keep yourself looking sexy, you know, whenever possible, within reason. Uh, he says that women don't realize how much power they have from the visual perspective. 50%, okay. Um, that's that's kind of news. To, I mean, I know that men are visual, yes, of course. And I thought that was part more of the attraction. And well, yeah, I mean, keeping them interested, sure. I, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love the idea of it being 50%. I think it should be 75% personally. I think that that is um, what keeps a man. If he sees some, another man looking at you or, you know, you can walk out. I mean, it's good. It's a good feeling for you. It makes you walk taller and sexier. Um, it's a good feeling for him. So I definitely, I agree. I, I like what he's saying. Everything. Now, ladies, think about this. Think about all the women who, once they get the man, they just let themselves go. Yeah. Yeah. 
you may wonder why he's looking around at all these other women, especially the younger girls. But yeah, you have to, I mean, and you don't have to look like a supermodel, but at least keep yourself, you know, and I don't even want to say in shape because you know, some of us we're gonna you know, we're gonna gain weight as we get older. But you know, keep it within reason where you still where you where that man looks at you and he still is so desirable of you. So I definitely agree with that. And I like what he said also, never let a man, so don't let a man take your worth or diminish your worth. Um, I, I agree with that 100 percent because some men will do just that. They'll change the way you dress. They'll want to change your hair. They'll they'll want to they'll want to dally you down so no no one else will look at you. Have you ever experienced anything like that within a relationship? I have not, but I have seen that done though. Yeah, I've seen that done to other people. Okay, yes. All right. What about you, buddy? Then that man just tell me, look at you in your little toupee. <laughs> For an example. But in, 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 in real life, um, no, if it's happening, it has happened, it's because that person is jealous of you. They're jealous of the person you are. They're jealous of what you project. So um, I'm not letting nobody stand in my way, you know. Mm -mm. And see, I don't think it's, see, and I don't think it's, I don't see it as being jealous, really. I just see it as the man wanting, he doesn't want anyone else to be attracted to you. He wants, he wants you he wants you. He wants you to you to lower your self esteem by changing your appearance, by changing your dress. You know, not being the what what attracted to what attracted him to you is not what he wants you to ultimately be. It's uh, it's really doing a number on your self esteem. You know what I mean? They, some men will do a number on your self esteem, and I don't know if it's jealousy or to just keep you in your place or I don't know exactly what it is, but they, if they can, and there's that type of man, they will do a number on your self-esteem where you are not caring how you look and you are gaining weight and you, you don't even know why. Well, and then you stop going out and you become a hermit. You're at yes. home. Yes. You, know, and mm -hmm. then, you know, he's barely coming home. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. Right, that's what I, that, I, once he does that to you, then he's not attracted to you anymore either. You've just done, he has did it to you so bad. He has um, made you feel so low about yourself yeah. that you stay home and you don't do this and you don't do that. And then like Chrissy said, he don't come home either. That gives him the opportunity to do exactly what he wants to do. So, yeah. <laughs> Ladies, beware, do not let a man dumb you down in any way, shape or form. If you're sexy, remain sexy. Even. 50, 60, even at 70, still be sexy. You know, don't change that. Don't be, you know, within reason, you know, but still be who you are. Be the beautiful black woman that you are or be the beautiful woman, any, any shade that you are. So, so ladies, here's, um, I've got one more, actually two more questions, see if we have enough time for these. I love this one. God has a man for you, not a boy. You have to, not a boy you have to mold into a man. This idea that you need to grow with a man who has yet to first come into his own is misguided. Yes, you can be the source of inspiration and motivation. Yes, you can be loving and supportive. Yes, you can pour into him in ways that contribute to his growth. However, all of this can be done while you are his friend, like actual friends, not acting like you're his girlfriend and giving him some you know, whatever, God didn't call you to be in a romantic relationship with a boy who has yet to become a man. I like that. So often, so often we feel like, women do feel like they've got to raise up, raise, raise up, raise a man up. You know what I'm saying? You know, he needs to come, he needs to come to you at least 90% there already. Don't you think? Of course, yes. I mean, who has time to be trying to raise somebody into manhood? I mean, at this yeah. stage. <laughs> you know what some women do, and that's because they want the control. It's all about control. You know, some women do because they want that control. What do you think, Lonnie? I agree. I agree with you. I love this one right here. Don't compromise so much that you don't even recognize yourself. And that's what we were just talking about. 
how, you know, the woman gets to the point where she's gaining weight. She's not, you know, she doesn't like the way she's, she looks. She's starting to stay at home, not go out with her girlfriends, always making excuses. Do not, do not compromise yourself to the point where you do not recognize yourself. And women tend to do that, especially when they're older and they, they get into a relationship. They haven't been in a relationship in a while. They're excited. They're happy. So you tend to kind of do some things that you probably wouldn't have done, you know, you know, 20 years earlier in a relationship. But now because you have someone, you don't want to lose them. You, 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 you do things that probably, you know, you wouldn't have done years ago. What do you think, guys? I, I think it can was- happen at any age. It's, you know, it's, it's really a self-esteem issue, right? Yeah. You can just start to turn into what he wants. Exactly. You don't, you don't recognize yourself anymore. You're trying to be what he wants. What he wants you to be, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Mom? Oh, I agree. I agree. Um, that's never happening to me, though, but I agree. It can happen <laughs> to other people. Um, I love this, guys. Uh, be his peace. That is a priority. We hear that, we hear that so much. Be a man's peace. A man doesn't want to go out into the world and have to deal with all the adversities that he faces on a daily basis because especially a black man and then come home and deal with, you know, a woman that may be um, upset over something so minor because that does happen, I will admit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I can, I definitely um, think that unfortunately we have to be their peace because we've always got to be there to center them for some reason. I don't know what that's about, but... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know how I feel about that way. So <laughs> well, remember that be his peace that we we visited that before. With yeah, we definitely, we definitely, you did. We definitely peace, did. Remember that one? Uh, here's a here's another one, guys. We mess up here and there. That doesn't mean we don't love you. Real love does exist. I love that. Okay, we somebody that still believes that real love it de- definitely exists. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, um, we all believe real, real love exists, right? Yeah, I hope so. we're, we're still, we're still out there. Yeah, we do believe it. We do believe yes. it. <laughs> hey, we, we do believe, we do believe. <laughs> remember that oftentimes. You don't sound so sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, so listen, this, uh, this gentleman said, remember that oftentimes men come into relationships just as broken as you and that and that is so two broken people together does not work that's mm-hmm. what sets the stage for arguments that sets the stage for so many so many things what do you guys think two broken people together but how do you know they're broken and how they know you're i mean well you would know when you start talking you know to a person you know if they're talking if they're always in a bad 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 space if it's always negative you know when you start okay you know, engaging in conversation, you'll know someone's broken. But uh, uh, broken people attract other broken people. That's too. true, but, that, but but that's like too negative. <laughs> Negatives are like this, you know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's I don't. It's not gonna work. But you know? definitely not. Definitely yeah. not. Well, ladies, um, I I enjoyed. Um, we got a lot of good advice. We got some not so good advice. We got some horrible advice. But you know what? I love that. <laughs> I love the fact that the men are taking the time to at least help us understand what they're thinking. So that's always good. And and it can only help uplift the relationship and benefit the woman that wants to at least take it in and, um, and marinate with it to see what works best in their relationship. So what do you guys think? We got a few more minutes in time. Well, I'm going to work on that, on that sexiness. You look sexy all the time, please. 50%. Wow, that's easy. So yeah, now, now when you come into the relationship sexy, you got to keep that going on. You know yeah, that. Keep it going. You swell? Okay. Well, let me tell you something. Ray used to always say, and a lot of my boyfriends always say, she got to get dressed to go to the garbage. Because <laughs> that's me. I am not just going to put on a hat or just go run out there like the way I look. I'm not now my granddaughter. She got to put full full makeup on, put that wig on, the hairdo on, and go to the store and come back again. Now I'm not going to do that, but I am going to put. I am going to accessorize myself so that I, I don't look like um, yesterday or the day before. Well, I okay, with, I I definitely agree with that. You should always go out 
go out with the thought that you might run into someone that you want to see and you want to look your best when you see them. So I think you should always, you know, always do that. So, hey guys, so next week we got a, we had an exciting week. We have, um, yes. Um, my friend Jonathan Young, he is a, um, he manages musicians. He's going to come on and chat with us. Not sure. I've, I've given him a little bit of latitude, so not sure exactly what um, the conversation is going to be about, but I know it's going to be because steamy because he is a very he can be very controversial so we should have a really good time so hey everyone out there just want to say once again please like share subscribe leave us a comment let us know what you think and watch next week watch 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 yes please it's gonna be a man on with us it is it's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting week wendy any parting words here i'm looking forward to next week all right let's, let's do it Ladies, <laughs> ladies, we're gonna have an awesome uh, week next week. So I will see you all next week. We got a few minutes, so let's just chat.